channel, Chuck 3387 here again. So, I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Um, talk a little bit about the 1KZT Hilux engine. Um, so, this is my 2000 model factory turbo Toyota Hilux. Um, I got it really cheap about four years ago and I pumped a fair bit of coin into it. Uh, it's a good truck. So, but anyway, long story short, I'm trying to chase a bit of power. The 1KZT is a little bit, a little bit slow from, you know, from factory sort of thing. So what I've done is I've put a full three inch uh, PPD exhaust system on it. Um, I've put a all type fabrication uh, stainless three inch snorkel on it. Uh, the guy who makes them for all type fabrication is a really good dude to deal with. It was only about two week turnaround to get it delivered to my door. Installation on the snorkel was probably about two and a half, three hours. Um, taking time and doing it properly so you don't have any giant finger holes, gaps in your guards, which would look like crap. So anyway, so they're the two main, main points starters to get power out of them, to get them to breathe better. Now, what I've done under here is, um, first thing I've done was put a, a boost tee on it. So over here you've got your boost tee. So, boost tee's on your turbo, wind the boost up a bit more. So these things have got a factory fuel cut at 15 PSI and then they'll have a fuel shut off. So I had it up at 14 and a half PSI. I want to trace a bit more, but chase more. People say you have to put a mechanical pump on it um, and add more fuel and all this sort of jazz. So I heard about this thing called a fuel cut defender. Um, it's a, you got a fuel cut defender one, which is like a vacuum one. And then you've got a FDC two, which is a electronic clamp. So it'll, it piggybacks into your, your boost pressure sensor. So what I've done is I've piggybacked into here, the boost pressure sensor here. So I've tricked the boost pressure sensor into thinking it's getting, say, 10 PSI, when in fact now the ute makes 18 pound. So it makes 18 pound comfortably, don't have a problem with it. I had to play with it, tweak it quite a bit to get it to be there, because before it wouldn't, would not perform. It, I did have a spike of 20 pound, but it just wouldn't hold power, it felt like a fuel cut. So, uh, roughly set it about 14 clicks from, from standard, like from, from off, uh, to clamp it. And yeah, so runs 18 pound quite comfortably. Uh, even the missus was quite surprised at the difference. The turbo spool, um, the pull, the torque, what it pulls like now in fourth gear and third gear is sort of what it used to pull like in second. So it, the torque range has changed, the power power wide's changed. Don't know what it's like on fuel yet because I've only done it about two days ago. So that's that's pretty cool. So these things here do have an electronic pump on them. Um, so you can't really fool around with them too much. There are people who say there's a resistor mod. So you can put different ohm resistors in your timing and your fuel. But I'm not playing with that. My money just doing this. This is all I've done. So the snorkel, cup and breathe. So all type fabrication as I said. Wicked snorkel, looks great, it's awesome. Up under here, so you've had to cut your guard out to get it up in there and get it all around and do a blood trimming and that sort of jazz to get it in there. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go for a drive to show you what sort of poundage it makes. Um, and yeah, check it out and hopefully, hopefully you guys like what you see. And if this helps anyone on the road to want to you know, get a bit more power, don't take my word for it because it works for me. But you know, it's not me telling you to go and do this to your car and make more power and you blow it up. <laughs> then I'll look like a fool. So, go for a bit of a lap. Um, so I'm over here actually first. Also, what I had to do is, before you, I do any of the sort of work, you put a, a, a boost pressure sensor in there and an EGT gauge. Um, so you've got the EGT probe in the back of the dump. So I've put an EGT gauge in there. The cable goes, like the wire goes down in the back, just into the dump pipe, just down here. And up inside here, I went through 4x4 four four customs in, uh, actually I'm pretty sure, where were they? Aubrey, I'm pretty sure, Aubrey in New South Wales. Bought the pillar pod, go down here. So if you're gonna do these sort of modifications, these are a must. So pillar pod was $141. Turbo smart, turbo smart. So EGTs and boost pressure sensor, or boost pressure gauge, sorry. So you just got 200, 263,000 Ks on it. I'm happy with it, pulls, pulls really, really well for, for what it is. So anyway, we'll go for a drive, show you what it, show you what it does and how she perform. Hey guys, so now we're going for a drive, rolling on here at about 20 k's an hour. So 
I'll give it some gas and show you sort of what 18 pound looks like. So, second gear. Spikes out to 17 pound in second. Third gear. 70k. 18 pound there. Back up against AM in fourth gear. chip or buy a 12 mil pump. This is what I've done to get performance out of my car. Um, I've still got it set at a point where it's not going to be making silly power obviously or you know where it's going to damage my motor hopefully not. So but if you're going to do something like this make sure you buy a boost gauge and an EGT gauge. Boost gauge obviously so you can set your pressures correctly. Um, EGT is a must um, to keep an eye on engine temps. Um, without that, you're sort of you're pretty much playing with a hand grenade. And at the end of the day, a 1K ZTE motor, second hands, probably going to run you about between two and five grand. Um, you know, that's for a um, a good second hand one or a rebuild. So you don't really want to blow one of these motors up because they're not cheap to replace. So, but yeah, if you come over here, you'll be able to see the boost gauge working, hopefully a bit better.